We've returned. I hope you had a good break. Sorry if I took a little bit longer than I had hoped for. Um, extenuating circumstances, yada yada, etc. and so forth. Uh, but by the, uh, the powers vested in me as the dungeon master of this game, I hereby resume our session. Uh, Benowulf has subscribed with Twitch Prime. Well, thank you very much, Benowulf. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying yourself this evening, if you've been sticking around and listening to our roleplay. Um, yes. To, certainly things have happened. Uh, to pass the baton, sure. then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to pass the baton. Uh, so you all have a little bit of homework that I'm going to give you. Um, I'm going to send you a basic, uh, like a grid ship diagram. That's going to have some basic dimensions. And then between the three of you, uh, come up with, you know, what what you want it to look like on the inside and outside. And then when we resume next week, uh, we are going to have a, a, a butterfly emerge from this cocoon of a, uh, a repurposed worm corpse. Uh, of course, with plating from uh, sand dogs, too. You, you, you want to know what I kind of feel like right now? Mm -hmm. I, 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 I feel like that the company part of Kuruma Company are, like, very quickly becoming, like, um... <laughs> I know uh, you, Derek, and you, Maddie, will get this because uh, you guys know your MTG law. We're, we're, we're kind of becoming, like, Phyrexians. We're, we're completing I can stuff. see that. <laughs> Where's the oil? The grand completion will be achieved. <laughs> uh, that's actually kind of scary and disturbing on a way that I don't think I was actually prepared for. Good job. I am then I'm happy to um to rustle your jimmies a little bit here and to uh to challenge you to uh to step up and think of new and fun things. Uh all right, so we are going to leap back across time and across space as technically the events surrounding Norlai and Bright are happening in the future of what we just saw. Um, and so uh, if uh, Dark Wolf, do I have you for a little bit? Like we can focus on you here yeah. first. Um, what we can do if you'd like, or if you just want to uh, dive into it, then we could, we could do through the quick character review or we could just jump into it. What would you like to do? Yeah, whatever. Um, Bright, do you do you want to just jump into things? Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. Oh. Still dialing in my voice, but I think I have it now. Okay. <laughs> yep, yep, it's right. Okay. All right, then quickly, um, I'll do it real quick. Norlai met her brother, wasn't as what she expected, and Bright took a ride on a dragon, and now we're here. Um, so Norlai, that, that's the super quick version. Um, let's start with Norlai, uh, just in case there are any time constraints or whatnot. Uh, let's, uh, you tell me where you want to pick up, because right now, um, uh, the company portion is more of the reactionary to what's happening. You're, you're the proactive, right? There's no one necessarily chasing after you. There's not like, you know, you're investigating, you're, you're looking into things, you're trying to improve yourself, get information or accomplish your own goals. So you tell me what you're what you're looking forward to doing. Um, we were raiding the library, Mr. Halvers library, for information. Um, did, did anything come out of that, or? Okay, so you were investigating the uh, library. For specific information on what again? Um, I think specifically she was trying to find information about the Stay Train because she has, um, or she probably wouldn't know it as a patron, but like, you know, this entity that, you know, is messing with Loki and they know, or they're pretty sure was also messing with Jade. Okay. Is this something that, uh, is Bright going to assist Norlai, or Bright, do you have other plans and you want to leave Norlai to her books? Um, well, I would certainly tell her a lot of the information that I already know, that I know from Jade, uh, that her patron was named Shonaruth, and that 
he likes tentacles and eyes and all those weird things. Uh, and that he kind of can make you go insane, but uh, it doesn't have to always happen that way because it looks like Loki's not. But it turns out that Loki's only sane because he's taking the Luciferous. So uh, how about that? Uh, but yeah, so Jade was a lot like me in that she sees things not quite the way they actually are, mm -hmm. except for her it's uh, it's a little different because she sees a distorted view of things, uh, but the distorted view is also kind of reflects an underlying truth. So it's a little like uh, it's a little like she's she's smelling things with her eyes. Does that make sense to you? doesn't make sense to me though yeah uh, in that she can she can see a little deeper things that aren't quite on the surface but at the same time it means <clears throat> she couldn't she couldn't see things the way they everybody else did so anyway uh that's how it worked and now out of character i know more about shona ruth but bright doesn't know those things so i won't tell them to norlai <laughs> all right that's good <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I have I have this side business that I need to get back to. Um, I mean, I stopped for a couple of days to work with Dallas Man, Dragon Man, and boy, that was interesting. And I kind of wanted to have a talk with Norlay about it too, but maybe we can do that offline. And uh, yeah, so there's a, a lot of interesting things going on. But I I guess I want to. I mean, everything that I've learned from Mr. Halver is very also very scary because it turns out that we have i guess i'm going to do my recap after all it turns out <laughs> that we have uh we don't really just have have two factions we actually have three and none of them are actually all that good i mean we talked to Siphonix and and mr Halver is very nice and they're not you know twirling their mustache evil but i could tell just from talking to mr Halver that that we don't really want them to come back. We don't really want the dragons back because they'll farm people and eat them and, and just not be very nice. And we, we can't have them either. So we have an old gnomish saying that says, let you and him fight. And that might be the only chance that we have because I mean, the dragons are pretty weak right now because there's not very many of them and and they don't want to reveal themselves. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of, it's hard for them, but the there's only there's only two stronger. as far as you know yeah as far as i know there's only two but um i mean you'd think there'd be at least one of each color so there's probably more <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um and i mean totally without you know, without any evidence to support this, maybe it's possible that Dragonborn could turn back into dragons. I don't really know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, oh, well. it seems like there's only two, but but that could, that could turn out to be wrong, or or it could change, or there could be more. Or I mean, what would be worst of all? We know that there's a bunch of undead dragons, and or that there's a bunch of dead dragons, and it would be horrible if the dead dragons turned into undead dragons. I have so many things that I'm worried about. Uh, so. Well, yeah. then, what what is your foremost worry? What what is threatening to turn your pink hair gray? Uh, so yeah, so I I mean I don't want to I want to keep an eye, keep tabs on the city just so that I can I can keep an eye out it and understand the goings on. So I need to I need to keep my detectiving working mm -hmm. but i also need to help norlai in the library and maybe i can maybe mr halverdell is he doesn't seem to understand like why it is that the things that the dragons did would upset people which is probably why he just told me those things so uh he doesn't know that i'm worried about him yet so i can probably still use the library and things so i'll, I'll i mean i have so many things to do that's true if only you could clone yourself <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not for a few more levels. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so okay. Uh, keeping beat on the city or, or researching the library then? what What is most important to you here? So, I think... Uh, I guess I can't make that decision because I don't know 
like how urgently things are going on in the city. I know I had an ally yeah. uh, who was helping me find cases, and I don't know that we really gave her a name or anything, but um, I don't want her to get frustrated with me. So I need to make sure that she's at least okay, but I also want to help Norlai as much as I can. So I guess I'd like to split time <clears throat> if I can until one thing emerges as being more pressing. Okay. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, obviously something big happens in the city, uh, then, you know, I mean, you're going to catch word of that. Uh, and because Norlai, you have some contact, uh, now you have to kind of go out and, I mean, both of you would have to, but uh, if something were to happen, most likely you'd be able to find out if it's major. Uh, so this, this is really, if you're just going to be a little proactive and go try and hunt or root out vampires or establish... Uh, are there any little mushroom fey colonies or, you know, what what's going on here? Um, uh, uh, that that would be below the surface of the obvious hustle and bustle, crime, uh, betrayal, triumphs, and everything that happened in a, in a city of this size. Um, all right, so if, if we're going to primarily focus then, Norlai, you want to do a bit of a deep delve uh, into uh, into some arcane lore here in the library. And, uh, and so we, we will do this, uh, this kind of research. Uh, in fact, if I recall correctly, there is a, a fun way to spice up some boring old research. And once I get the right page, there we go. 132. Uh, now, Norlay, are, are you going into to full on like you're wrapping yourself in a blanket? You're not really moving. Like, are you just sort of like in a hunkered down uh, hermit mode uh, in the library here? Like, is Bright gonna have to put you know like a like put a pillow under you as you fall asleep at the table? Or are you are you a, are you sticking to kind of a normalish behavior, or are you just really down in the dumps? Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, pro probably a little, a little down. She, she probably would focus on kind of research. Okay. Um. Then, uh, what I would like you to do is uh, to make. I want you to make an initial investigation check, and we're gonna have a um, a, a bit of a, a mini downtime slash skill challenge as you're doing some research to determine what you're finding, and even beyond what you're finding, more importantly, what you're understanding. Because you can find a book that's like, oh, the big book of elder gods, and you could crack it open and just be completely, what what is this? Uh, yes, yeah, noted, Norlai. <laughs> uh, fortunately, Herbert doesn't have to move too much. Uh, you could just set him right there if you wanted to. He needs a lot of water, you know. Yep. Got a good pet. Uh, so go ahead and make an investigation for me. A seven. All right. So, Norlai, you are... I mean, books... <laughs> What's that? Could I Tides of Chaos that? Uh. Sure. Uh, give myself advantage. Let's, let's take a 15 instead. Okay. Um. Uh, so you're, you're in the library looking and your eyes are just crossing as you see all of this. And, uh, and, and there's just this, you know what? Close your eyes, point a finger, spin in a circle three times and, and go to the book that you randomly are pointing to. <coughs> and so you do that and you find, uh, some interesting books. I don't know. There's like one on gardening, uh, one on, you know, advanced mathematical concepts, um, there's one that apparently has some lewd etchings in it. Um, so, uh, it, it could, could there be a pattern? Could there be something that is important, uh, in all of this perhaps? Uh, but you're starting to grab, uh, some different books, 
and uh, br bring them over to the table uh, as you're, you're creating like a, a reading list. Um, she's not the only one, though. Sorry, everyone. I'm responding to chat off to the side here. Because, uh, look, Mr. Halver might have, you know, he's an old dragon. He's, you know, he's got to have some entertainment. Um, now what I'd like you to do is you're starting to uh, crack open these these books. You're, you're looking for things that might have some connection, uh, you know, things about, like, mysterious shapes. Yeah, people make different hand signs and different shapes, looking at uh, sources of uh, sources of power um, and, and some fundamental uh, concepts of magic of different varieties. I would like you to roll uh, an arcana, please. <laughs> I would like you to roll a religion, please. And I would like you to roll a history, please. Okay. So 11, 10, I'd like 40, you to so. roll better, please. <laughs> uh, so bright, uh, over oh, yeah. over some time here, Norlai. Norlai looks like a very busy student. Um <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, nor lie, a lot of this stuff, you know, by doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she more of a learn by doing, but unfortunately, you're in a library, which is uh, kind of the opposite of that. Um, and so some of these concepts, like, y you get it, and, and you're like, okay, so if I draw the circle and then I put this like star ish shape in it, and you, but but why? I, I don't understand what I can just use magic, why do I need all this stuff, or, or who needs the you know, th these different resources and things like what, what is, what's the point of this? It, it, this is just, this is like magic one oh one stuff uh, that you're approaching from the int score, not the cha score. Um, and, and so a, a lot of this is just the, the concepts behind magic. And, uh, and now I would like you to make uh, an insight and you can do this one at advantage because this is relating to, uh, yourself and your brother. Okay, so not a two. That's good. <laughs> uh, so with a 14, um, so it, it's taken a couple days here, Norali, as, as you're really trying. Um, you know, it, you, Herbert's still there uh, providing you uh, emotional support as best as a semi-sentient plant can do. <coughs> Pardon me. And... It, it's dawning on you that the way that magic is cast from people like Bright is different than you. Well, duh, that makes sense. And the way that magic is cast from people like Celine is different from you. Well, duh, that only makes sense. The way that magic is cast by you is also different. But your brother, your brother didn't study like Bright does. And as far as you know, your your brother hasn't necessarily become a, a holy man. He wasn't exactly wearing monk's robes or anything. Yet he was capable of wielding magic. And magic a lot like Jade. And Jade, how did Jade cast her magic? Because it wasn't like you. Jade wasn't just able to summon up wells of power as they as they course through her. Uh, Jade was was methodical, kind of like Bright, in at least in, in procedure, but uh, um, she did have a book. Books could help, but you don't need a book for your magic. Celine references her book, but she doesn't necessarily use it to cast. Mordecai, uh, I mean, he could have a book of, of music, but he just seems to produce it. And, and this is really stirring you and getting you to think on, on, a, on an elementary, not just like grade school, but on an elementary level of what is building this? What, what could be the nature of this? And Mr. Halver, uh, he doesn't really have a lot of books on the types of magic that you wield. You found a couple references about uh, people who are able to spontaneously cast magic. Um, it's not that people don't, but it's, it's more like, you know, some cantrip stuff, uh, you know, people who, 
Uh, just uh, maybe they were born into it. There's. Um, Didn't he write a whole book about that? That's the whole reason I'm here. No, with the, yes. Uh, <laughs> but we're we're talking with Norlai as an intimate caster. It is experiencing her magic in a different way than what's observed by Mr. Halver or Delos of the Blue Flame. And so you're trying to square your knowledge, such as it exists of your own power, with that of accounts of other people manifesting theories on, well, maybe we all carry a little dragon blood and then some people it awakens because dragons are seen as um, a primal source. In fact, you're kind of reading this and, and Mr. Halver really seems to like dragons. Uh, they're mentioned quite frequently as uh, magnificent uh, magical beasts, and uh, but he can't really give you the, the places to find them. Um, and so, really, Norlai, from this, studying books, as, as you always have been a doer, unless you find a, well, <laughs> kind of literally metaphorically, a magical book on magic, um, you're, you're able to glean some stuff, but you don't see, you don't see any of this, this, style of magic that is not a god. Godly magics are, are talked about. You know, the way that you can intone uh, the will of, uh, of a god in order to bring peace or war or these different, uh, these, these different things to the world. But what your brother is experiencing just isn't... It's not touched upon um, in, in a, a kind of a depth that's going to bring you satisfaction. Uh, from what you're finding. Now, you've only been researching for a couple days. You can go to a local library and spend weeks just finding new books and uh, and absorbing information. Um, but we haven't encountered that one, uh, that magic book that's going to tie everything together. Uh, so at this, at this juncture, you can continue to research or you can go and experiment or come across some other interaction or form of knowledge and, uh, you know, the, the pursuit and understanding. The Book of Gardening does have a, a good variety of flowers in it, though. You could probably learn some things about Herbert. <laughs> um, she might go out and use her last uh, contact slash favor okay. and try to get some information to see if Loki is still in town. Sure. Um, okay, so the uh, y you're going to put the word out here. And um, you will hopefully get word back, yay or nay, shortly. Uh, in the meantime... But then, because someone's not going to have an instant answer for a question you just asked about researching uh, the location of someone like that. You can go back to hitting the books. There could be more secrets. Uh, probably would go do that. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let's do. Um, I won't need an uh, an, uh, an initial investigation, uh, but go ahead and roll a uh, another Arcana. Hey, that's a cool one. That that's a green number. Uh, go ahead and roll a religion. No, oh, well, I know what class you failed. That's a red number, everyone. If you can't see that. <laughs> Roll a history. It's like Christmas. Yeah, Miss Celine, <laughs> Celine is very upset with you, Norali. <laughs> You've been you're... skipping out of religion 101 again. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's a history you can choose between a 13 or a 13. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, and lastly, you know, there is that book on gardening, and Herbert is kind of important to you. Give me a nature. Okay. Um, all right. So you dig up a, a couple different things here. Um, 
as far as religion goes, eh, you know, it's it's not really the concepts are escaping you. I don't know your feelings on belief. Uh, I mean, obviously, magic exists, but I mean, to that extent, then it, mm, it, 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 uh, it, probably a little more on Mordecai's side. Okay. The religion spectrum. So, I mean, you read it, but it seems pretty apparent that, you know, sure, the gods probably exist, and they have these agents that uh, claim to enact their will, but, um, you know, at that point, you know, it's not it's not really, you know, you're you're just a, a, a tool for this other, you know, for this other entity or something along those lines, and despite getting so close to possibly a breakthrough, um, you're just like, eh, uh, it, it, this isn't your cup of tea here. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, Bright comes in with a nice cup of tea for you uh, to refresh you because you've been studying. You have a you're too young to have bags under your eyes, Norali. Um, uh, for history, uh, you are reading that oftentimes natural disasters uh, can be like big natural disasters can be attributed to uh, magic and not just the workings of nature itself. Um, and you do find in Mr. Helver's collection, there are a lot of references to uh, the Fall Fire Plains. And especially because that does seem to be in the records or the books that he has, um, that there's a large source of this wild magical energy that just seems to manifest there. And, uh, and so part of his, his books and his theories about how people can acquire the types of powers that you have um could be related to this as an epicenter of a great uh a great natural disaster that had occurred in history and uh and had shaped uh all, you know mesotopia around it um as fall fire is rather central I mean, it's it's kind of inland uh, a bit there but the, i mean there's even this big crater uh there's a very beautiful natural etching uh, of the crater from the sea and there's like a waterfall that kind of you know comes out from the highland and just kind of pours down into the ocean over this giant divot that's been taken out. Um, so, I don't know, there there could be an answer if you go to one of these, um, you go to one of these other wild magic areas, like especially Fall Fire Plains, if that is the, the ground zero. Um, although, you know, you think about it, and there was also wild magic in the north of Mesomasca with the flowers. Um, and and you, you're finding some notes about that. In fact, uh, you know, nature, eh, you rolled a four, um, you know, you, you haven't suddenly become illiterate to, well, you, you put a seed in the ground, give it some water, and it'll grow or whatever after a while. You've been taking enough care of Herbert to understand, you know, the, the basics of, um, uh, you know, of that. But you are finding that, uh, especially when just dabbling a bit into history here, um, horticulture has been a large part of, uh, of Mesotopian... Um, uh, of Mesotopian society uh, for a while. Like, people have been growing flowers um, throughout Mesotopia and in more regions than others. Um, and, and it's just, you know, maybe it's just a, a, a vanity thing. Uh, it, it could just be, well, you know, we, we get perfumes and, uh, and maybe even a couple medicines and such. Uh, and then, of course, there's those wildflowers that have that, that weird magic to them as well. Um, but, you know, flowers seem to be a, a big part of Mesotopia as well. Um, and, uh, then we come to Arcana. And for your Arcana, as this was your crit, um, I will, I will turn this around in as best as I can through a medium of books. Um, give me, uh, you ask me three questions about magic and I will answer them as best as I can. I guess my, I guess 
how she would question this is um, mm-hmm. what type of magic would drive someone insane? Okay. Um, oftentimes, uh, magic can drive people to madness uh, when they realize that they have power over others. And so the power is what can drive them mad uh, because they they then forget who they were as they've become something else. Uh, very specifically, not just the, the power to cast a fireball, um, but perhaps even more so is magic that can give you information. As oftentimes... Uh, the more information you have, you can often feel uh, paranoid or paralyzed by all of the thoughts that you have, all the options you have. And and so generally as a school, uh, divination is thought to be one of the most dangerous forms of magic uh, to the user because it can give you so much information. It can drive you to paranoia and madness uh, with the revelation of things that you never you never knew or the things that uh, it confirmed you thought always existed. You know, it, it, life is a whole lot different when you find out there is actually a monster under your bed. Um, and of course it can give you insight into yourself or other people um, that, uh, that just will, you know, I always thought this about this person, but these are their true thoughts or their true behaviors or, or something. Um, so often it's the power and especially the knowledge uh, aspect of magic that uh, you're finding can cause madness. Hopefully you don't know any divination uh, practitioners, because they are the most insane people you'll ever meet. <sighs> Question two? I think she would also want to learn something about what types of magic could do with healing. With healing? Yeah. Okay. Um, sure. Uh, you you can find an index of uh, of uh, known spells that can repair the body, and that can repair the mind. Um. And that is both uh, for your knowledge and for your emotions, uh, your your logos and your ethos. Uh, and there there can be a distinction. Uh, so if you find uh, uh, if you find a, a restoration spell, uh, sometimes a lesser restoration can work. Um, you'll get better results with a, a greater restoration. And there's some other spells that can also. Um, that can also heal the mind. Um, you are finding, and you got to draw back to the, the dangers or paranoias, that there are also spells that uh, they may not be able to heal the wound, but they can stop the bleeding. And so there are spells where you can actually change people's thoughts and you can manipulate their emotions so that if someone is sad, you can make them happy. Or if someone is upset by a memory... You can simply just take a little uh, magical melon baller and scoop that part out of their brain. And that you're removing the source of distress. And so while it is added under a curative magic, um, it's it's uh, you know, it's, it's not putting a bandage on a wound, so to speak. It's it's like removing the limb that's infected in a, in a sense. Um, so th- there's a list of different spells. So if, if you choose to research or invoke them or try to find someone who can, you know, do this, uh, then, I mean, you would have some knowledge of these spells to know what to ask for. Um, oh, hey, Neo Realms, thank you for the host with uh, five viewers. Uh, it's, and so you would have some uh, knowledge to ask maybe some informed questions or to seek a specific uh, savant or service uh, about similar spells. Um, and it might open up something for you too, and uh, as you're you're absorbing this information, 
Um, I mean, you, you're kind of a, a magical conduit, and part of that is, is conducting the magic from around you and expressing it. So, you know, depending, you did pretty well on this. Uh, we can talk. And then, what's your third question? You said you're trying to track down your brother? Yeah. Do you want to... probably look up some tracking spells as well. Okay. Um, you're given several tracking spells, and uh, and you kind of, I don't know, maybe you grimace a little bit, because these are, these are, for the most part, divination spells. And, of course, once you learn the things you learn, they can cause you to be in a bad mood, and isn't that true, Norali? Um... Now, not only are you learning about some spells, uh, like scrying, uh, and in fact, it was, since you're reading some components, Mr. you swear Mr. Halver has a room that has a big old silver dish in it. Um, and he always said that that was for special occasions, uh, but you've never had a fancy enough dinner for him to break that out. But it is a very nice piece of silver uh, silverware. Um, uh, but is, you know, some of this stuff uh, and components and whatnot, you swear that you, you've seen that he has around. Uh, but you're also learning that there's a couple spells that can prevent people from scrying, like countermeasures. And um, that often uh, these are employed by people who don't want to be seen or people who don't want to be found. And if not employed directly by the caster, then they might know someone who's capable of casting that spell um, or to pay for the service. Um, so there, th with this, Norali, there could be a chance that uh, you could scry on your brother. There could be a chance that if you do, you still can't find him, or some other, uh, some other source of uh, divination or prevention that occurs. Um, but this is, uh, we'll say that this is opening up your mind to, well, it's opening up your mind to divination magic, uh, and how to employ it or or to baffle it even. Um, and should you need uh, the components for some divination spells, uh, you would also know that there's a room Mr. Halver keeps this stuff in. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you're sure he'd let you just use it. I mean, he's not really around anyway right now. It's just he went back out on a trip. Also, I feel that um, Norlai prob probably being a little tired would try to cast Awaken on Herbert. Okay. Um. Awaken lasts a month. Am I correct on that? It's 30 days. 30 days. It's a level 5 spell. Okay. I have a spell. I'm going to bring it up real quick on my my side paduff here. After spending it the casting time. It is charmed for 30 days. Okay. But it should stay awake. Ah, uh, yes, the, the the awakening portion permanent, the charm part is, um, is 30 days. Okay. And, um... Ah, <clears throat> uh, let's see. Now, as a part of... this, Does the scroll still need the material component? No. Uh, it shouldn't. Okay. It, 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 it does not. Okay. Millie scrolls include their own material components. You use the component when you create the scroll. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Get a really good deal on that scroll. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's almost like you stole it. Yeah, it was a it was a real it was a real steal. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I, I'm going to have to come up with some st statistics and stuff for it. Okay, sure. Uh, you can use the Waken st uh, Shrub and just give it a bite attack. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, I mean, don't you have, um, don't you have stats for the, uh, the Sentry Vines? No. Huh. <laughs> well, y yes and no. Um... I have a basis upon which they can operate, but I, I don't have like a, I don't have a, uh, like a, a card or a printout or something here. Um, we'll right. actually, yeah, we'll use, uh, we'll use kind of a basis, uh, along the lines of a, a twig blight, I think will work, uh, for, uh. Okay. Just make sure to add a bite attack. Yeah, and I'll uh, I'll uh, as I I gotta give our other party some uh, some of the uh, the the homework for like a ship hull and everything. I'll I'll work with you a little bit on Herbert. Uh, you know his his scores or whatever. That, that won't be immediately relevant here. Um. All right. So I you're gonna I think spend. You also have to roll to uh, to see if you succeed on being able to cast a spell too. Yeah. Because it is fifth level, and you're not fifth level spells. What's the check on that, Arcana? Uh, it's a it's a DC it's a DC fifteen uh, charisma check for her. Oh, because uh, it's based off your spell casting. Yeah, okay. based off your spell casting, and it's ten plus level of the spell that you're attempting to cast. So uh, you need to make a DC fifteen charisma check, on which you could give yourself advantage because you have tons of chaos. Yep. You would just have to cast a level one sorcerer spell first, or otherwise let the floodgates open. It has a. The, how long has this um, research been going on? Because I get that back after a long rest. Oh, it, yeah, but if it, yeah, it does regenerate normally enough. Yeah, I assume this was over a period of days. I mean, there's also Ben Block if you need it. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought Tides of Chaos. You had to. You had to force uh, a recharge nah. on it. Uh, no, no. It recharges you can, normally. But also, it recharges at a long rest. Normally, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, chaos. Tides of Chaos. And then, and then you're a, a charisma, charisma check. check or a charisma save. Charisma check. It's a check. Straight up cha. Right. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. No, she's. All right, so Norlai, uh, it takes eight hours to cast this spell. <coughs> Normally, the the scroll retains the. I, I haven't done a lot with scrolls in my time with D and D, so. Uh, uh, I'm just telling. Can tell you that. Um, I forget offhand if I I don't know if you could just read. Casting a, time is, is eight hours. Is the same? Yeah. Okay. I don't it, think yeah. I, I change casting time. You you don't think they do? I could double check. Okay. Uh, Are we touching Herbert this whole time? So, or can, it, can it be like while well, I'm researching, I'm just constantly betting? <laughs> well, the, you are you want to imbue Herbert here, so this is going to have to be Norlai yeah. Herbert time. Uh, so yeah. you, if you want to be in your We're room or something, just sitting, petting it, talking yeah. to him, talking to yeah. him for a full yeah, day. no, it, it, it is an, it is an eight hour cast. Doesn't change the casting time. Okay. She's gonna be really tired. Yeah. Right for this. She's gonna take. A I break. am gonna go. I'm gonna run, and I'm gonna go get ready for yep. gathering of food. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll look for a notification. Yep, yeah, you'll get the notifications and whatnot. I am especially excited for next week. What with, uh, you know, super-powered ship and... Ah. Gorbits and whatever happened to Selta and everything else. So, uh, GG guys, and I will see you guys next week if we don't see you in about an hour or so. Yep, uh, real quick, uh, what's the level and the theme for tonight? For tonight's one-shot? Uh... It's level ten, and the 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 prompt. I actually forgot what the prompt is. Okay, so... well we'll find out when we raid you. <coughs> you'll you you'll, you'll find out. It, it'll be on stream. Okay, alrighty. I'll see you around. Alrighty. Alrighty. Uh, see you if not now, then next week. Uh, so Norlay, are you are you like locking yourself in your room for this day, or are you are you trying to be social? Um. I think she'll she'll still be in the library. Oh, okay, sure. All right, uh, bright man. One of these days, uh, 
Norlai's just out there just petting Herbert <laughs> and reading from a scroll. Yeah, I'm used to that. It's like when I snuggle Piggy Sue. <laughs> uh, and uh, at the end of this uh, time, no, no uh, big earthquake or anything hits the city. And uh, Herbert, Herbert's a little different. Uh, there's a, kind of a glowing pulse. Um, starts wiggling on his own and there's no breeze. Um, and uh, can even make some uh, some kind of like hissing noises in response to you. Uh, also, he should be able to learn a language. He is going to learn Infernal. Ah, all right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, in this time, I guess you're speaking Infernal to Herbert, uh, you know, petting him and uh, and you know, asking him questions, talking to him. And, uh, and so just as this takes place, uh, can make some rasps and hesses and, uh, and is slowly forming into the infernal language. Uh, congratulations. Herbert is awakened. Right. You just started hearing Norlai talking to someone, but you don't know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds normal too. Also, I might not be there that day. I don't know. If we're around, I would have mentioned. Happy to help you with those crying things, especially if you know where to get a, an appropriate. Do you want help with scrying, Norlai? I might. You, you do know where the uh, appropriate accoutrements are. I would probably know where that is. So, it on it if we can afford anything. Yeah, so those, I mean, it's usually really expensive to get the appropriate equipment, but if Mr. However is willing to let us borrow it, um, because then we just have to learn the spell. And I've been, I mean, it's a spell that, that we used sometimes in school, and it was it was kind of useful. Sometimes we would scry on on each other and sometimes we would scry on the grade book to learn how how each other were doing and sometimes we would we well sometimes the the boys would scry on the girls locker room so we had some spells in in practice to to kind of to discourage that so we had lots of <laughs> lots of lots of things like that so yeah anyway it's a spell that we used a lot but the hard part is just getting the right equipment for it so if mr halver wants us to or is willing to let us borrow his equipment then yeah um I mean, I've been practicing the spell, and it's it's pretty complicated. And usually, we would, um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think I can cast it just yet, but soon. Well, Hello. you know, Mister Halver's not here right now, but yeah. as my brother would say, um, uh, how did he say? It? If they don't know you borrowed it, it didn't happen. Yeah, that that makes a lot of sense, especially because. This doesn't actually use the item up. It's it doesn't hurt it at all. But the problem is, I can't actually cast the spell right now. Um, soon, as soon as I as soon as I'm ready to cast it, I'll let you know. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to practice. Tower of the Father's book. I don't like. They're kind of dumb. I didn't hear what you said. I don't like reading books. They're tiring. <laughs> I don't think that's what you said because that was not the part that I didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> you got caught, Norlai. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, I mean, not everybody does things the same way, so that's okay. I don't like waiting for. Um. Well, would you would you at least like to show off the room to Bright? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Bright. Uh, Norlai leads you through the house. Uh, through a, a couple Wait, different five corridors. Five doors left. Yeah. No, Wait. Five doors right, and then two doors left, and then another right. Uh, you and as you enter this, oh. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. What was that? You go through the same room twice, twice, but you get to it eventually. That's the key. Um, 
you enter a room that is uh, looks rather bare bones compared to the others. Um, almost like it's just... Uh, the, the library has some personality, and, and heck, even the outside is, is sort of in the, the shell of a ruined building. And it has some, like, urban flair, and, you know, at least it looks lived in, or at least it once was. This is just a very cold, sterile place. Well, not sterile is in the medical term, but just cut stone stacked on top of each other. It's kind of cold in here. You know, and, and things just have a, a layer of dust. And a lot of things are also have uh, some sheets uh, that are laid over them. Uh, oh, like this is a, a bygone storage area for uh, for knickknacks and uh, and other things. And uh, and Norla, I mean, th this was always the storage closet. I mean, as far as you know, this is just where all the old boring stuff goes that people don't want or need anymore. Mm -hmm. Um. Ah, oh, that's that's really interesting. Go for hide and seek. Ah, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast. And that'll be with a spell slot. All right. Uh, bright, nearly everything in this room is magical. This is fun. This I'll place is lit up like a disco. Later. Um, so, yeah. Um, this is too much stuff for me to... Um, to be... Oh, goodness. It's... Uh, it's so... It's it's too too bright. I can't I can't see. Um, okay. Well, at least I know where the room is. Um, this might this might be a place that's worth returning to, but there's just too many things for me to to do right now. So, um, why don't we focus on the thing that we need? Get mad if we touch his things. Mm, yes, I will. I will go find the silver platter. Of course I'll follow, but I'm not touching anything yet. I'm only looking. Looking with my eyes, not, not with my hands. Not a lot of Matt, you got muted. Sorry about that. Um, yep. So some magnifiers, some different, you know, whatever, charting the stars uh, in the sky tools and whatnot on this desk. And um, and Norlai says, ah, oh, here it is. It, it, this is the silver dish. Uh, Norlai, would you, are you revealing it? It is underneath a uh, kind of a dusty cloth. Uh, yeah. Okay. Be really careful. So is... Am I detecting any magic, especially evocation and or divination magic, in the vicinity of this metal? No. Okay. So, um, it looks safe, but uh, just to be extra safe, uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, which one do I want to use? I'm going to go ahead and call up my Unseen Servant. That's also going to be a spell slot today. Okay. Um, so, Betty, I'm, I'm going to need you to move some things around. I know this is a really easy task, and normally I wouldn't even for this. Although I know it doesn't really bother you, because you don't actually have hopes and dreams and desires of your own. But um, I would like you to, if you wouldn't mind, um, if you could go over there, and while we stand back over here, if you could go over there and take that little cloth off of that plate and bring it back over here, that would be really nice. Okay. Uh, Norlai, are you, you going to stand back with Bright and let I, Betty, the Unseen I, Servant, do this? I, I, I don't know why you're going through all these extra steps, Bright. I don't want it to explode. No, it shouldn't explode. I usually do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it to explode, though. <laughs> Man, Norlai, Bright's being really paranoid lately. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. So, so the thing is, even touching stuff <laughs> that belongs 
to someone like Mr. Halver, you can get in a lot of trouble for that. <laughs> So, I'm really, I really careful. A lot. Okay. Not that often, but quite a lot. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, Betty, the unseen servant, um, walks over to the table that has a cloth over a, a large dish. You see it whoop, raise up. And, Norlight, you've seen this dish before. It's kind of cool looking. Um, it's not it's not perfectly smooth, so it'd be more like maybe like a, a stylized salad bowl or something like that. Um, has kind of some jags to it, uh, kind of radiating up. Um, it is kind of polished. Uh, has a very cool, like a very natural look to it. Uh, bright. This is a this is a bowl made of scales from Mister Halver. You've seen these scales before, and this entire bowl is like made from polished, fused scales. Well, that's that's interesting. See, this is why I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's well at all. This is first of all. This is this is way more than than technically necessary i mean usually it's just like a finely wrought silver bowl or a silver mirror or sometimes it's just like a really fine piece of like lead glass crystal ball um so this is this is a little more ornate than is usually used for a scrying spell although it would probably work but my guess is it's it's a kind of overkill and we definitely don't want to take this we definitely don't want to take this with us <laughs> So, so the thing about scrying spells is that sometimes there's, there can be like a little bit of a feedback, and so if you have the right kind, so like they work both ways because if you have something that belongs to someone else, uh, then and then more easily, and if if they have something that belongs to you, it goes the same way. But also, uh, just like being with something like that is dangerous because they can see their own things too. So if you have something that's actually literally made from, then it's still like magically speaking, it always belongs to them and not to you. But what what do you mean made from someone? That's that's just metal. Oh, these are dragon scales. Mm. Oh. How I mean, yeah. how, 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 did he, how did he get a dragon scale? No, that's a really good question. Um, Tazri didn't look like that. Yeah. Um, so, but no, I've just, I've just seen dragon scales. We had some dragon scales on display in the wizard school. And this is what yeah. they look like. And yeah, dragonborn scales are a little different. Like dragon scales are really hard and almost impossible to pierce through. And dragonborn scales, they're like lizard skin almost. They're just kind of more for show. Although they can get hard sometimes. But yeah, real dragon scales are way more, way more serious. They're almost like little pieces of armor. Sequins, if you want to think of it that way, but way more hard. Yeah, but... Yeah. We had this. We this, we this, this having something like this is, is dangerous. And I so, mean, you know, dra dragons aren't alive anymore, so no, no one's there to. Yeah. No okay, so maybe there's, maybe there's something else in the library we could use. I mean, I would not want to use this without his permission. Uh, that's really well, valuable. No. You won't notice. Okay. Let's, um... I mean, we can ask him before we, you know, if we need to take it, we can ask him, but, you know, we're just borrowing it. Yeah. So, the other thing is, we don't really need it right now, because I can't cast the spell anyway. It's going to be a little while before I've learned to cast it. So, um... Well, now you know where it is. So you can yeah, now it. we know where it is. And also, but it's terrifying, so that's good to know, too. <laughs> So, Betty, how much does this... Oh, she can't answer me. How much does it look like it weighs? You can lift it so it can't be um, too heavy. 
No, this is this is probably uh, twenty pounds or so. This is a a big scale made bowl. So big. Okay. Okay, let's make me. Yeah, no, I don't I don't want to carry it anywhere. I want to leave it here. I mean, we can just put it back where we found it. Uh, now that we've seen it and we know where it is, it's good to know. Uh, I mean, definitely, like, stealing it from the room and then, like, hiding it in our room while we're staying here, that seems like it could go wrong really easily. <laughs> so I think we should leave it here, and now we know where it is, and that's nice. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You notice that the more scary things we see, the more worried I get about them? Yeah, that's... that's... I think that's very reasonable. <laughs> okay, so while I'm here, uh, I, I'm kind of a little curious about all the astronomy stuff, because it seemed like it was kind of prominent in the room. Is this like an observatory? Or uh, if, if I look up with my detect magic, will I see, uh, like if the there's like a an illusion in the roof or something that could be concealing an observatory. So, uh, divination and illusion. Muted again, still muted. I I shouldn't be. I have a I have a, a on oh, light on my I'm mic, and it looks like. <laughs> hello, hello. Can you hear me out there, channel? Good now. Okay. Okay. So yep, divination and illusion in this uh, kind of um in this. Uh, it's kind of sky watching charting station. Okay, and the illusion is it looking like it could be blocking like line of sight for a telescope or is it just like in little corners of the room? Uh no, it, it's more in in corners uh corners and flat surfaces of the room. Okay. That's interesting. Um just one second. The room's actually a total mess. He used an illusion to make it look quite clean. <laughs> it's possible. It's very possible. Hmm. Okay, so it doesn't say... I'm gonna just put this out there. Uh -huh. Does this opinion, would it allow me to discern the nature of an illusion? Uh... Pardon me. I don't have to. I can just I can just make an investigation check, right? I can just go over to a, one of the illusions and make an investigation check. So, is a part of detect magic. Like once you want to disbelieve an illusion, you can just do that. Oh, with investigation. Oh. Maybe the thing that I'll start with is going to one of the illusions in the corner and seeing if I, one of the ones that doesn't have other things glowing, just illusion, nothing else, and seeing if I can figure out what's going on over there. Sure. Go ahead and make an investigation. All right, you take some time looking around. Norla, you're watching Bright. Kind of crawl and look and you know, touch and interact here. Um, you're fairly certain, Bright, that the illusion is more of a, a means uh, to display than it is necessarily a mask or a wallpaper. Um, and so that might be in conjunction with the person using the room or the tools where, uh, you know, things that are observed or things that, uh, that can be... Uh, displayed out on a wall or something um, could very well have that uh, projected and uh, and possibly depending on the nature of the illusion 
uh, even in 3D. Or to have other sensory experiences like uh, heat or even smell. Oh, that's, that's really interesting. Oops. Okay, that's better. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so the illusions, they're just kind of to make things more interesting. So it's kind of funny for a room that's so nondescript and not very... Doesn't look like there's a lot of traffic back here, but there's still illusions to make it look the way it looks. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, understand. you might be able to use the tools to invoke it, or um, as these are... The the if illusion you put your effects. Hand to the ceiling. There's cobwebs everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah, I hope you don't mind spiders. Um, don't really. <laughs> Piggy Sue worries about them a lot, though. Well, yeah, the, 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 that's her <laughs> due concern. Um, uh, but yeah, you might. Uh, I, I mean, if you're curious enough, you might even be able to uh, to see what the last, like what it was projecting last. Like it, it might be. Uh, sort of like saved as the go-to or, or the startup or something. Um, I don't know how curious you are, but... Oh, so they're, they're illusion items. They're not just illusion illusions. Correct. Misunderstood. But, well, but, but, case... but they're, they're like parts of the room. So it would look like... It's not like a, a spell like paint has just been coated on the wall. These are these are things, because this is like a, a reliquary or this is a, a storage area. These would be things like what we might consider to be like little security cameras or whatever. That are up on the wall. Oh. Okay. You know, similar. He has the he has the scrying dish. There's there's things around. Okay. Well, then in that case, yeah. Well, why don't we see if we can if we can activate one or or operate one and see what it's set to. Norla, you want to help? Yeah. Yeah, you might learn something about magic. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure. Uh, one of you can make an arcana at advantage. I have a plus three. Some of them won't. have way more. <laughs> Not that I can roll well, though. So seventeen. All right, seventeen. So, uh, Norlai, with uh, s some of Bright's guidance, I mean, you're looking for things that might act as a, um, like a, as a, a magical trigger. You're getting a bit of a lesson, but this is more of a hands-on, and not like those dumb books. I mean, what? Um, and so, Bright, you're noticing that Norlai is is definitely getting this hands-on magic lesson. She's enjoying it. Um, and uh, there is uh, by one of the uh, by one of the illusion magical devices. Uh, there is um, a series of, um, well, we would know it as, as like anodized, uh, like colored uh, colored metal. Uh, and, uh, and there's different pictures that seem to be engraved into them. And can either of you read Draconic by chance? Uh, no. Okay. Um, written in Draconic. Uh, are some words on the different plates that seem to fit into uh, into one of the devices uh, or uh, on the on the table? So they're probably. I can't read any of these instructions, but it's probably like you just put it in, and it'll show you what what it means. There's a little slot. So out of character, it's like a record player. <laughs> um, why don't we try that then? I mean, I don't know what it's going to do, but. Uh... You want to try Norlai? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> pick a card, any card. You know, because okay. you have several of these anodized plates. I'm going to go uh, for the shiniest. Okay. I'm fine with it. All right, Norlai chooses the shiniest plate. Um, Puts it in, and nothing immediately happens. 
Uh, it might need some kind of a, a prompt or a, a command word or a, kind of a magical charge. Okay, let's try. Um, I'm going to use this as a ritual. Um, I'm going to see if I can identify the projector. Uh, sure. All right, so Norlight, uh, jam out for 11 minutes while, <laughs> while Bright is... Uh, yeah. You're going to just go play with the random item in the room? With the what? <laughs> A random item in the room. Uh, sure. Uh, roll a percentile. That is Ah, cool. <laughs> Let me see if this does anything while you you play with it. Uh you go over in on a mannequin, there's a really cool looking cloak that's just kind of sitting there and is also kind of dusty. Um And there's something about it. I mean, not only does the cloak look kind of nice on you, Norlight, it has a hood on it so it can keep the rain off. Um, you know, it seems to be pretty good uh, craftsmanship here. Um, you've seen patterns like this similarly somewhere before. Um, oh, what, what could it have been? What could it have been? Uh, and just go ahead and make a, and it just a intelligence, just a straight up intelligence check. Books are dumb. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, but something about this, as you're wearing this cloak, it just sort of, it gives you a tingle. Like, if you hang on to it, it'll just sort of, I don't know, you, you, you'll feel comfortable in it. Like, a, like just a second, not a second skin per se, but there's just a, a feeling of magical potential. Um, and uh, And it just is begging to be understood by you. Um, well, in other words, that's me saying you got to attune to it if you want to do anything with it. Well, I'll keep it on. I'll just flaunt the cape a little. Okay, you can do that freely. You don't have to attune to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so <laughs> Bright Norlai's going to come back after a while. And she's going to be in a, a fantastic cloak. Um, what color is it? Um, it is... Oh, it, it's uh, it's kind of a, a golden, like a golden brown, um, in, in the way that it 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 has uh, like it the it flows and shimmers. It reminds you of uh, you've heard of a place called Aslandia, and it, it, they have a bunch of like sand dunes because apparently it's just a it's a big old beach up there. Now it sounds kind of weird. I mean, you've been to a beach before, so who'd want one that is even bigger than what it already is? But it just sort of reminds you of like the these shifting, flowing, big old piles of sand on a beach. Sand yeah. Yep, yep, sand colored. Um. All right. The identify spell goes off for bright. Um, and uh, you are you learn that this uh this device will accept a uh, a plate, and uh, if you are. Uh, if you're uh, putting magical energy into it, uh, then it will take the information on that anodized plate and through the uh, through the illusion projector, it will uh, it will recreate the information that is on that plate. Um, and so if you uh, if you want to sit there and actively cast into it, you could use cantrips. Or if you use um, if you use spells of uh, of first or higher, 
um, it'll actually buy you 15 minutes at a time per spell slot. 15 minutes per, like, spell slot per level? Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm, yeah, uh, per, uh, yeah, per spell slot, I mean, uh, so if you cast, uh, if you cast a, a fourth level spell, it'll last for an hour. Okay. If you cast a first level spell, it's 15 minutes. Well, I don't have a tremendous ton of use for third level spells right now, so let's go ahead and use a third level spell slot so we can get 45 minutes and then we'll put in another quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, yeah. That's a... <clears throat> All right. Uh, so you uh, you pump a third level spell uh, into it, and the magic just seems to ripple throughout this anodized plate. Uh, Norlai, I mean, you see all sorts of colors start to brim, and in this dark, otherwise just almost like a dungeon room, just stacked stone. It's, it's a little musty and damp and uh, cobwebs and stuff everywhere. You can almost see the magic just just course up into this uh, illusion device on the wall, and. Slowly, the uh, this part of the room uh, grows a little darker, and you see some stars uh, start to come out uh, over the over the sky. And um, you're feeling now a breeze that's kind of blowing through your hairs, uh, your hair, and your horns. Uh, it even billows your your new cape very well. Um, beneath you. It's almost as if just grass is is growing up around your shoes, and you can feel uh, you can feel the the blades of grass uh, just sort of like sway and, and like lightly tap against your shoes. And as this as this scene is coming to life around you, um, on the breeze, uh, it's it, it's just it's nothing you can necessarily nothing you can necessarily put. Just it, it smells kind of flowery. Um, a sweet scent in the air. And uh, it's a night sky. And you seem to be atop a hill. Hmm. What I'm really hoping for here is a history lesson. But maybe this is more like an illusion that we have to interact with. Does it seem like there's anything um, is it just a night sky that's being predicted? Oh, I, I think Discord's eating your voice here. Uh, I, I didn't really get that. Okay. Uh-oh. I, I, I understood you, you think it might be an illusion you have to interact with. While we're waiting for Fluffy to come back, Norlai, are you doing anything in the midst of this uh, starry night on a knoll? Uh, K-N-O-L-L, not G-N-O-L-L. <laughs> okay. Important distinction. Oh, there we go. Oh, nope. I don't hear a voice. Discord, por qué? Okay. Um, oh, there you go. Again. Yep, there you go. I hear you. Who knows how long it'll last. So, yeah, everything you said, I didn't hear except that there are gnolls. And I think they're the good kind of gnolls. <laughs> the grassy ones, yes. <laughs> yeah. Which are still not all that safe, as it turns out. Yep, but yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, this time it's Coffee Cat who died. Oh, well. Uh, if Coffee needs to reset, but uh, go ahead while we still have you. Uh, what do you want to do? Um, any any of that whole spiel, so I don't know what's happening here. Uh, you you said that you thought this was an illusion you have to interact with. Oh, I, yeah, I wondered if it was something we have to interact with, or if it's something we can just watch. Oh well, um, I mean, you could sit in this illusory grass and smell the sweet scent of night air, uh, and watch the stars pass overhead. Um, there's nothing that's like, you know. Click me for more information or something like that. Um, but he has an exclamation mark over their head. 
Uh, yeah, no one with an exclamation mark. So it could be interactive. I mean, it's it's already interactive because you're getting all the senses with this. Uh, but there's nothing there's nothing glowing or like you know proceed to next segment or anything along those lines. I let my cape flow in the wind. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Okay. So against my better judgment. Do that now because we're we're using our time. Well, that's frustrating. Okay. Um. Can I still see out into the real room? Yes. Uh, beyond uh, beyond maybe about a 10-foot radius uh, that that uh, has this projection going on inside of it, you can still see the room beyond. Kind of fun. Okay. So, um, stars in the night sky here. Mm -hmm. Are they the same as the stars that we usually have? Uh, nature? Too. You are noticing that there are there's a few inconsistencies, Bright. Uh, the sky does not look the same, not in a hugely different way, but you're noticing in the, in some of the the more readily uh, available constellations you're used to, um, where eh, yeah, just something's off about it. There might be an extra star here, or um, or a missing star elsewhere. You're getting the gist of the constellation, so not a ton has changed, but it's enough that this is a different night sky. Interesting. Uh, so, Norlai, uh, this is showing us it's either from a very different place or a very different time, or maybe even a different plane of existence. It could be... Go. I don't know. Um... So is there any, there are no figures, no characters here? Uh, just you two, it seems. Yeah. Um, Why don't we try a different disc and see if it... Oh, but that one was shiny. You have yeah, 15 minutes I... on this one. You can try a different one. How many are there? Uh, there's 10 different uh, plates. Ten different discs. Yeah, I mean, six. yeah, I just, so I want to pay attention to the stars, though, uh, just in case they differ again. And so it's just like grass and hills and, and nature here. There's no, no structures, no people. Correct. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. So why don't we try a different one and see what it does? Okay. Set this one aside so that we know we've already looked at it. Sure. You can start a new pile. I'm grabbing number six. Okay. Okay. Uh, put that in. Uh, what are you going to be using to fuel it? Uh, I can just cantrip at it. If you want. Commentary. Thank you. Thank you for, for helping with the power here. If you're doing that, though, Norla, you're going to have to be focusing on that, so it'll be up to Bright to pay attention to what's happening. That's all right. Okay. 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 Uh, so Nor uh, Norla's over there kind of effectively like, turning the crank for the phonograph for you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so this one starts manifesting, and you see, uh, and you see some mountains start to appear, and, uh, and then uh, once again the grass kind of ripples up at your feet. And this is a uh, this is a, a bright day. Um, the sun is out, and uh, you're seeing a mountain range. Um, trees, a lot of trees. Very natural looking. No people that you can see. the mountain range to look familiar? I mean, I know there's mountains that we've passed here in Mesomasca. It, um, it does appear from from this to be the, a similar stone to the uh, to the mountains that run through the, the central part of Mesomasca. 
Um, where in particular? Um, I guess a... Uh, I'll take a nature or survival. Yeah, nature's good. Nature I like. Hey, 15. 15. Um, you remember, you know, now that you're looking at it, this, this is the part of the mountain that would actually be to the east of Mask of Horns, a, a, a place called the Landlords, except there's no faces carved into the mountain. And these are great. Like, it takes a long time for these semi-nomadic tribes to carve these tiefling faces into the side of the mountain. But from from all the etchings you've seen uh, of this area, yeah, yeah, there's that one distinct peak, and and that's what that's what formed the idea to start carving the faces, and and so that's still there. And so it, you you think that you have the location, but there's no tiefling faces carved into the mountain. Okay, so now we know we're looking at an ancient time. We're looking. Probably when dragons ruled the earth. Um, wonder, I mean, is this just like somebody's travel photos? I don't understand. <laughs> um, uh, okay, well, why don't, uh, I mean, if there's nobody here, I try another disc. Norla, you gonna change the record? Um... You can always just troll bright and not do it, but. <laughs> I have more spell slots. Okay. All right, so she switches to eight, and you're going to still feel it with cantrips? Uh, I'll just put a spot in. Okay. Uh, what level? Uh, level one. Okay, roll a d20 for me, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's a cheaty die. That's a 29-sided die. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm on to you. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, you close the gate in time. <laughs> what are you rolling 29-sided die? What's going on here? <laughs> well, we'll just use those for our tech rolls. Um, okay. Uh, you now uh, you find yourself uh, in a, uh, a shaded glen in a forest. Uh, unfortunately, this is not an Uct forest, uh, Bright, but uh, it would seem to be uh, a variety that you'd find around here in um, in Mesomasca. And uh, and things are, are popping up all around you again, uh, a sweet breeze, the grass. Uh, you're, you're finding some little woodland creatures. And, uh, and then uh, in front of you uh, appears to be some kind of a nest that has really large eggs in it. In a tree or on the ground? On the ground. I want to go over and see if I can touch it. Okay. Uh, as you do, uh, the eggs kind of finish materializing in the illusion, and you definitely are getting um, a, a scaled feel to the outside, kind of leathery scales. Okay. Um, and I want to <coughs> try to find out, uh, now that I have some experience with illusion magic, I would like to make an arcana or, or something to determine if actually have substance or if they're if it's just like illusionary texture. Sure. It feels real. I mean, you know this is an illusion, but you know, damn if it's not a pretty good one here because th this feels like it looks and you know even even the smell of uh, uh of an egg uh and of the nature and of kind of the, the musk of a nest or whatever that's around and as you're investigating uh this bright you know you're leaning down you're you're touching the egg here um from behind you you hear uh you hear sort of a padding crunch as underbrush is uh is being moved aside okay nor like turn off the Turn off the projector. Oh, you can't. This is a powered one. Okay, well, I'll turn to, to look at it. Okay. Um, and and so, uh, Norla, like, Bright, you turn around from the nest, and Norla, you see, as you're looking past the illusion into an empty room, and slowly coming now into reality, 
is a large silver scaled lizard. And by lizard, I mean dragon. It's outside of the illusion. It doesn't seem to exist outside the illusion. You you heard in like 7.1 high quality stereo it was approaching, oh. but it only materialized okay. when it reached the edge of the illusion. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just stand aside. This one, hopefully it doesn't try to eat me. Hopefully this is just just a recording. But I'll stand uh, well to the side so that I can see what it does. Okay. In between it and the nest. Um... Roll a nature at advantage for me, Bright. Okay. 17. 17. Silver Dragon for sure. It's not Mr. Halver, but in looking at some uh some of the the subtle uh the subtle differences in the body uh due to whatever kind of uh like sexual dimorphism that could exist amongst dragons. Uh this does in fact seem to be a female dragon. And uh, she lays behind the nest, somewhat curled up around it, and uh, in kind of a regal pose with her neck up, um, but her, fr her her frills are slicked back, and uh, and she is looking not at you, um, but she's definitely staring off to some point, maybe like six feet, eight feet or so off the ground, um, and just from her body. Uh, you, neither of you need to roll inside or animal handling or anything. She seems relaxed, very happy, um, and is uh, is quite proud um, as she's laying there with her uh, with her eggs in the nest. And then you hear crunching behind you again, and another dragon pulls itself from nothingness into a semblance of reality. And Bright, you recognize this silver dragon. Not quite as large. And maybe the frills uh, aren't as large or even look as weathered. But Bright, you're definitely looking at Mr. Halver as he walks up and through and the two of them nuzzle each other and they begin speaking in a language that uh, you don't understand. Ancient Draconic, probably. Okay, uh, Norlai, we definitely want to save this one again. I can't understand that language now, but how to, if we needed to. Hey, um. so... Is that the end of the... Um... Yeah, letting it play out for a little bit longer. Nothing else seems to be happening. I mean, they're they're very affectionate. It seems to be kind of a casual conversation. Neither of them are especially ruffled or um, riled up or the like. That's... I mean, I'm sure she's long gone. I wonder what happened to her. I wonder what happened to the babies. In the graveyard where Celine used to live. Okay, why don't we try another one? You can power this one with the slot if you want. Number five. Number five. Power this one with the level one slot. Okay. You have 15 minutes. You are in a forest. Once more, it springs up around you. And the view changes, as does the, the point of view, as this one isn't as static. Um, and now both of you have flown, as that's been one of your escape measures from uh, vampires. So you're, you're, like the bottom of your stomach gives out a little bit here, as, uh, as it feels like you're flying at first. Uh, the wind whips up around you. Um, a slight little bottom-out effect, but, I mean, you can still kind of bounce on, on a stone floor. And as you... As this scene is scanning, there's the sun in the sky on an otherwise bright, beautiful day. And then you look in another direction, and there's a second sun in the sky. And... 
This sun seems to have a dark cloud behind it. In the fall. And it's getting brighter and closer. It flickers. You can even see it through the, the partial clouds in the sky. And the clouds part. And the second sun is drawing nearer. And nearer. And then it shifts. And you're diving. Once more, your stomach feels like it's giving out. You're diving back towards the forest. And there's a flash. And you don't even get your full 15 minutes worth. my money back. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Anything from this, I think it's just interesting. You know, kind of how that happened. We know that these are memories, but I don't understand because this one is a first person memory, but the other one was from third person. So something's different. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that works. Maybe there was another, I mean, it doesn't make sense that there would be another dragon present at that other memory. Uh, okay. Well, maybe they just used a different to get them. I don't know. Uh, out of character, no, because I'm more tired, but in character, they would probably go through all of this. Okay. Maddie, uh, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> I guess... Uh, I don't know whether I'm in character or not. Uh, okay, I mean, we could um, put this offline, too, if you have, like, text for the others, because I'm going to want to watch them all. Yep. Um, allow me to present one more to you, then. I mean, if you're going to go through them all, that's fine. What number is um, uh, the, It won't necessarily matter. Um, I mean, because you're kind of arbitrarily numbering them anyway. They don't have numbers on them. So you're pulling from the stack. Uh, let's make it seven. Sure. <laughs> so six, seven, eight, and five have been uh, spoken for here. Yep. Also the shiny one. Which is also five, six, seven, and eight. <laughs> if it's easier to remember that way. <laughs> or that too. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All this new math. Come on. What's going on here? Um There's fire. Everything's on fire around you. So again, this seems to almost be another first person. Uh, and not the, the static image. And there's sounds of shouting, sounds of something else going on. Smaller voices, though. Not, not the, the deep, uh, you know, conversational draconic you heard before. And uh, Norlai, it's it's accented or something but you swear that you hear some shouts or language of infernal somewhere contained in this uh, illusion hmm. and uh bright what languages do you speak not very many common no mission elvish got it um you hear uh you hear something that you think is elvish but it's it's different enough that it's it might be a relative language, but you can't really understand it. Um, and there's also some roars uh, that are happening. Anyway, you're running through. Um, it seems that the forest is on fire, and uh, breaking. You're, like trees are toppling. Underbrush is just going uh, is going every which way. Um, and you're running and you're running, and you reach an area a, a copse of trees that looks very familiar. In fact, you saw this copse of trees uh, before uh, because there was a nest on the ground that had some eggs in it. And uh, busting through the underbrush, uh, you see that there is a silver dragon uh, that is laid dead. And dozens of tieflings and elves? Uh, there's something weird about the elves, though. They have these kind of insectoid eyes. 
so kind of like the almond shape that elves have inherited and in a bit like what the gnomes have but norali you've seen these eyes and it's it's difficult to mistake body forms like this but for sure those are definitely tieflings as many of them lay dead around this silver dragon that's unmoving by a nest and yet there's still dozens more and they seem to be eating the eggs they're dipping their hands into them and scooping. And the last thing that you see is really just everything going into a blur before some kind of a, an energy. A yell. A forceful energy. Something goes white, like perhaps frost or something. Seems to blast forth. And everything gets so cold. And the illusion stops. And there's a few more, though that one I wanted to present because I believe that would be a, a more poignant one for you. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting one. So, that one... I mean... Do we have a sense of the perspective if we were watching it from a a humanoid perspective or a draconic perspective? Draconic perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay. Stand on the tower not to go off on. Well, I wonder if those... It sounds like the overthrow of the dragons here. Those tieflings are the ones who went on to become dragonborn. Or I wonder if those are just eating the eggs because of victory in battle. Normally, is that a thing that tieflings do? Do they like eat their enemies? If they would, no. if they beat them in battle? No, they eat, you know, fish and chicken eggs. Is everyone always eating each other? It causes so many problems. Yeah, yeah that's weird. Who would travel with someone who eats people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whoever those people are better watch out. <laughs> a good session um do you if you have text that you want to do for the other ones uh or we can do it next session we can finish it up however sure. you want to do it okay then uh i believe we will call the session here uh in fact i think oh gathering of nerds just went live a little bit ago so i guess we can go give them a raid so that's good, good timing yeah uh Good, good game to you all. I, I know it's a bit of a, a, a sour, a sour note. Although Norali's innocence to the situation might still be preserved beyond her uh, empathy for animals as uh, grand or uh, whatnot as a dragon may be. Um, obviously, something you know, something kind of sour happened. Um, but uh, you can leave the, the true twisting in the wind to bright because she knows everything because she's a divination person. So she's clearly the most insane amongst everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I, all right, I, Coffee Cat, I'll take a look at that. I, I just saw in chat here. So, all right, you all, uh, sleep well uh, whenever they, it finds they you. They left me with uh, the stats later, too. The what? Or, oh, the stats for Herbert? Herbert? Okay, yeah, I, so I, apparently I have some homework to do, too. Uh, yeah. I got to give, uh, give you some dragon dreams. Uh, I have to give you stats for a ship and stats for an awakened flower. So. I can help. 
Yeah, there's there's an awakened shrub in the monster manual. I think I posted the link. Of course, yeah. you have to use those, but. Uh, I think we were talking about using a uh, blade. Uh, twig blade, he said. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah. I'll uh, I'll look Whatever. through it. We're not in a rush. It's not like uh, you know Herbert's uh, been used in something actively. So, all right. Well then, uh, thank you all, and uh, what uh, for everyone out there in the audience, thank you for hanging around. I hope that you really enjoyed it. Uh, Volvo is giving you all some praise with a, a marvelous show. Um. So thank you, Volvo. Thank you to, to all the others uh, who are watching and participated. And let's go raid the Gathering of Nerds um, after this Death of a Dragon, Birth of a Dragon, uh, I guess, mm -hmm. themed episode, in a, in a sense. And I'm going to go pass out. And yeah, go pass out and enjoy some good sleep. And uh, yeah. Oh, and Dark Wolf, when you paint those minis... Mm -hmm. I, I know it's tough for you right now, but when you paint those those dragon minis you got, I, I want to see them. Actually, my, my sister is back in, into the, the spare room, so I have my setup. I just hey! Have to cleaning my room. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, because we got, like, some dishes piled up that I got to get rid of. But I got my setup. I can paint again. I'm off tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs>